And what do you fear most? Uh, well, even that utopian kind of view has some questions around it about what will be um, our purpose as humans if there are these technologies and that are out there that are solving all these problems, yes. what will be left to solve? Yes. You know, I worry about that as a scientist and you know, the scientific method even. So there's that. But there's also obviously the, the well-known uh, challenges and risks with AI of, well, twofold. One is bad actors um, uh, using AI for harmful ends um, or the AI itself as it gets closer to AGI and becomes more genetic, um, it goes off the rails in some way that harms humanity. So we need to talk about this interview because honestly, the internet is absolutely blowing up about what Demis Hassab has just said. And for once, the panic is actually justified. I mean, we're not talking about some random tech bro trying to pump a crypto coin. This guy is the CEO of DeepMind. He literally just won a Nobel Prize. So when he says we're looking at a non-zero chance of extinction, you have to take it seriously. But, and this is the part that is genuinely wild, he's not just doom-mongering, he's laying out a roadmap for the next 12 months that is fundamentally different from what we're used to. If you listen closely to his exact words, he's talking about moving from chatbots to world models, which basically means we're evolving from AI that just predicts the next word in a sentence to AI that understands physics, gravity, and cause and effect. It's the difference between knowing the word apple and knowing what happens when an apple falls off a table. You need to listen to this clip right here, specifically where he uses the terms world models and agents, because this is essentially the blueprint for 2025. Um, what does the next 12 months of progress look like? What do you believe that if, if we sit here a year from today, yes. and I would love to, uh, what will have changed in the world? Um, I think the things that, that we're, we're pressing hard on are... Um, uh, the convergence of mo mo modalities. So you, Gemini, which is our main foundation model, has always been multimodal from the beginning. It, it takes images, video, uh, text, audio, and then can produce, now increasingly produce those uh, uh, types of outputs as well. Um, and I think we're getting some really interesting uh, cr cross-pollination by being multimodal. And one, the best example of that is our latest image model, Nano Banana Pro, which um, I think shows some astonishing sort of understanding of visuals, and it can kind of you know create infographics that are really accurate and so on. So I think over the next year you're going to see that uh, uh, progress a lot. And I think, for example, in video, when that converges with the language models, you're going to be see some very interesting combinations of capabilities there. I think the other things we're going to see over the next year, and I'm personally working on, is world models. So uh, we have this um, uh, uh, system called Genie, Genie 3, which is like an interactive video model you can think about. So you can sort of generate a video, but then you can start walking around it like you're in a game or simulation and it stays coherent for a minute. I think that's very exciting. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe uh, the other thing is agent-based systems. So we, I think the field's been talking a lot about agents, but then they're, they're not reliable yet enough to do full tasks. But yeah. I think over the We've next... We've heard a lot about that today. Now, did you catch that distinction? Because that is the whole game right there. He's talking about world models. And if we pull up the footage of DeepMind's Genie or OpenAI's Sora, you can see exactly what he means. These aren't just video generators. They're physics engines that simulate reality. But here's the thing that worries me, and I think this is the part people are missing. When you combine a model that understands the physical world with an agent that can execute tasks, you're not building a tool anymore. You're building a digital employee. Hasidus admits that current agents, like the disastrous Rabbit R1 launch we saw earlier this year, are pretty terrible. But he predicts that reliability gap closes in just one year. But frankly, this leads us to the most dangerous part of the interview. If these agents are autonomous enough to do our jobs, are they autonomous enough to ignore our safety protocols? Hasibus says yes, the risk is real. But his solution, he thinks the free market will fix it. AI operating outside human control on its own. Well, this goes back to the agentic stuff where I think as that becomes more sophisticated and it's clear why the industry will build those things because they'll be more useful as things like assistance. Um, so they're definitely going to happen. But the more agentic and autonomous they are, the more room there is for these things to uh, deviate from what you maybe had intended when you gave the initial instruction or the initial goal. So this is a very active area of research, which is to how to make sure that systems that maybe a capable of continual learning or online learning stay uh, uh, within the guardrails that, that you set. 
I mean, I think the good news is um, because AI has become such so big commercially and for enterprises, if you think about renting or selling one of your agents as a model provider, leading model provider to another big business, those businesses will want guarantees around the agent's behavior, what it does with their data, what it does with their the customers. And if those things go wrong, they're not going to be existential in any way, but you'll lose the business for sure. So, because why would that business enterprise go with that provider? They would choose a different provider that was more responsible and had better guarantees. So I think what's great about that is um, that, that will, it will sort of capitalism will reward sort of naturally, uh, ideally, more responsible actors. But it's possible that the AI could jump the moat, jump the guardrail. Potentially, if done wrong. I mean, it's, that was always a possibility where we, nobody really knows what the, um, that's one of the big unknowns. I think it's non-zero, that potential. Uh, so it's worth very seriously considering and mitigating against. But um, you know, I, I hear people talk, you know, give very precise percentages about what the chances of these yeah, things the, are wrong. Yeah, a P-doom. A P-doom, which I think is kind of nonsense because no one knows what it is. So what you, I know is it's So you, non don't, you don't quantify it, but you no. say, say it's- It's non-zero. So clearly, if your PDOM is non-zero, then you, 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 know, you must put significant resources and, and, and attention on that. I mean, essentially, he believes capitalism will reward responsible actors. But, and I have to be skeptical here, does that actually hold up against the data? If you look at the airline industry, specifically the Boeing 737 MAX disaster, or even the recent crowd strike outage, the evidence suggests that when there's massive profits on the line, safety is usually the first thing to cut. Hasidus admits the AI going rogue risk is non-zero, which in probability theory is a terrifying number when you're talking about the extinction of the human species. But assuming we don't go extinct, he paints this picture of radical abundance at the finish line, which is basically a sci-fi utopia where we solve nuclear fusion and cure every disease. Well, look, the, 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 the best case scenario that, that I've always dreamed about and why I've worked my whole life on, on, on AI and, and you know, getting closer to this moment we've been working towards for decades now, many of us, is... Um, uh, a kind of, I have something called radical abundance. So this idea of we solved a lot of the biggest issues confronting uh, society and humanity today. So whether that's free, uh, uh, renewable, clean energy, maybe we solve fusion or better battery, optimal batteries and, and solar uh, materials, uh, semiconductors, you know, material science, we've solved a lot of diseases. So then we're in a situation where, you know, we're in this new era, post-scarcity era, and we're potentially, you know, humanity is, is, is flourishing and traveling to the stars and spreading consciousness to the, to the galaxy. But that brings us to the WALL-E scenario he hinted at earlier. If AI solves biology and energy and economics, what is actually left for us to do? I mean, fundamentally, if the machine provides the answer to cancer, but we don't understand how it did it, have we advanced or have we just become pets to a superior intelligence? But look, the craziest part is the timeline. For years, people said AGI was decades away. But if you look at this timeline Hasabis is projecting now, he's saying 5 to 10 years. And honestly, with the way scaling laws are holding up, it could be even sooner if we hit one or two more breakthroughs. What's refreshing about your approach is with artificial general intelligence, human-capable uh, AI, you don't shy away from it. Some other people say, well, we won't know, or we're already there, or it doesn't yeah. matter. You say that it does matter, yes. and we will know, and you say it's not far off. Yeah. We're definitely not there now. So, and, and I... And well, I, actually, quite close is how you say it. Yes, quite close. Yes. I think yes. we're like five to ten years away, if you were to ask me. I'm sorry, I think say that again. Five, five to ten years okay. away. Yep. I think my bar, though, is quite high. So this is the... the, the we define AGI as, you know, the, a system that, that, ha, that exhibits all the cognitive capabilities we have. And that includes uh, inventive and creative capabilities. I think there are missing... There's, as all of you have used the current LLMs, they're, uh, they're, they're amazing in some ways. They're really impressive. In some senses, in some, they've got incredible almost PhD levels uh, key skills in some areas, IMO gold medals and so on, but in other areas, they're very flawed still. And so they're these sort of jagged intelligences. So the, you would expect across the board consistency from a true AGI, and they're missing other capabilities like continual learning, online learning, long-term planning and reasoning. They can't do any of these things currently. I think they will be able to, but maybe one or two more breakthroughs are gonna be required. 
We are standing on the precipice of the most transformative moment in history, oscillating between radical abundance and total obsolescence. He thinks we can thread the needle, but I want to know what you think. Is a Nobel Prize enough to stop a rogue algorithm? Tell me in the comments if you buy it.